Hello everybody and welcome to another real estate video. This is Javier Vidania, the real estate YouTuber in Phoenix, Arizona, helping you accomplish your home goals. Today's topic comes from a subscriber who actually left this comment a while ago. However, it really stuck with me and I think it's a really great idea, especially now with people having to buy homes with down payments and bringing in co-signers and co-borrowers. So thank you for your question. I think most people have a pretty good idea of how co-signing works when it comes to credit cards or car loans, but for buying a home, people think, think it's a lot more complicated because now we're talking over a hundred two hundred three hundred thousand dollars worth of a loan instead of a little credit card but it has some similarities and some differences so today I'm gonna help break that down for you and your potential co-signer to kind of help you guys get started with your home buying journey you should not feel guilty if you need a co-signer some some situations it's the what we have to do to get the job done so I've made a video on this channel specifically talking about what are the three things you need to buy a home if you haven't watched that video I recommend it before you watch this video however for those that watched it understand that there's three pillars or three things you need to do to qualify for a home one thing being your credit score second thing being your your uh, monthly income or rather your employment history meaning you have to have at least two years of work history and the third thing is your debt to income ratio or in other words calculating your debts uh, monthly obligation and minimum payments against your monthly income and making sure those ratios work for co-signing you need to make sure that one of these categories is 100 percent secure and that is your credit score you cannot it doesn't matter if you have a co-signer or not you have to meet at least the minimum credit score for whatever loan you're qualifying for this means if you have a 400 credit score and you're saying well let me just get a co-signer to help me out no that doesn't work in that case the co-signer will be buying the home for their in their name not have to do nothing with you so you need to make sure your credit is 100 percent solid so co-signing is more for people that have that good credit already they're already qualifying but there's something going on with their debt to income that doesn't allow them to qualify them for as much for example it could be two things it could be that they have a lot of debt a lot of credit card debt student loan debt and that's preventing them even though they make a decent income that's preventing their debt to income ratio to act, work out or actually qualify or sometimes they can qualify but it's not for the purchase price they want or it's realistic in that market another thing could be you could be at pretty low debt you could only have one or two credit cards and your debts could be pretty awesome however your income isn't quite there yet you're just starting out your career you know you might not be making exactly as much as you'd like but because your income's not that high and even though you have lower debts you won't be able to qualify for the home you want or a realistic number that you need for that price point so in these situations is when a co-signer would be needed not credit related reasons but for those reasons co-signing for a home loan can be broken down into two categories but before i break down those two categories i want to make sure that the co-signers understand the risk they're taking by co-signing and more importantly the requirements they still need first and foremost the same rule applies to what i just told you guys about the actual borrower if you're a co-signer a co-borrower whatever you're going to be you need to make sure your credit is up to par you can't come in, even though if you have amazing income and you have very low debts and you want to co-sign for somebody, you can't do that unless your credit score is at the credit score that's needed. And you want to make sure that your co-signer that you're adding is actually going to add something to the equation. If you're trying to add a co-signer that has a lot of debt and their income ratio is really off, then they're probably not going to help you qualify for much more for a home. However, if you're adding a co-signer with a lot of income and not so much debt, well, they're definitely going to put into your equation is going to help you tremendously. In addition to this, you shouldn't expect them, the person who you're co-signing for, to get an amazing program. Let's just say um, I'm buying a home and my dad's going to co-sign for me and I have a 650 credit score and I barely qualify. My dad has a, an 800 credit score that's amazing and flawless. Well, if he comes and helps me, he shouldn't expect my loan program to now be amazing because the lender always uses the lowest credit score as the basis of their program and their interest rate and all that info. And lastly, understand that you're getting yourself into a financial burden. This means that even though you might not be on the title or um, you're not gonna be living there exactly yourself, that's gonna be on your credit report. So this affects you in two ways. One, if the person you're co-signing for decides to not pay their payments or they're late 30 days, well, it's gonna hurt their credit, sure, but it's also gonna hurt yours just the same. A 30 day late, 60 day late are really horrible things to have in your credit so please understand and fully trust the person that you're helping that they're gonna be able to a be able to pay on time or B have the confidence to tell you hey I don't think I can make my payment on time this month can you help me and you have to as a co-signer I'd be able to help them if that's a situation or have enough trust that you know that they will pay on time and they will figure out what they need to do 
to qualify for a home. But also it affects you towards your future purchases. So if you decide you want to buy a home a year or two years after you co-sign for somebody, well, that monthly debt of that payment that you co-signed for is not going to be part of your debt to income ratio. If the ratios are really tight, now you basically added this home mortgage to your debt to income. So the odds are is if you try to buy a home on your own, you probably won't be able to qualify anymore because you have this big monthly debt of that home purchase. So the co-signer and the borrower need to understand that if you do want to buy a home in the future, you need to either sell the home before you're ready to start buying or you need to refinance the co-signer out. That way they can be able to buy in the home on their own and not have that monthly debt on there. So if you as a co-signer and the borrower understand the things I just told you about, Let's get to it. One of the categories for co-signing is a non-occupant co-signer. This is a person that's co-signing for the borrower and it does not intend to live at the actual property. So in this situation, the co-signer is treated just the same as the borrower. They need to have a qualifying credit, they get their monthly incomes and their debts, and they put them into the equation with the actual borrower. So odds are you're probably including this co-signer because you need a little more income. So if they have much more income and they're not adding too much debt to the equation with this non-occupant co-signer, you're able to kind of boost it up and qualify for a lot more. The same applies, it is still gonna be their debt when buying the home, but there's some situations when the non-occupant co-signer is actually not on the title of the loan. So the home itself won't be necessarily in their name. I think there's an option for you to include that and most of the time they do that. But I've seen some situations, I don't know if they've changed or not, where they're not on the actual title of the property. However, the mortgage is in their name. So just like I said before, if the borrower decides to pay late or, or foreclose on a property, it affects the co-signer and the borrower the same, even though the co-signer doesn't live at the property. It is also very important to note that as a in this situation where you're having a, a co-signer that's not living in the home, you cannot qualify for down payment assistance programs anymore. This means you're probably gonna need your down payment. And yes, you could use the down payment from the actual you know, non-applicant co-signer. If they wanna help you with the down payment, that's totally fine. The second category is a co-borrower. This means that the person that's helping you qualify for the home is actually gonna live in the home. So for example, if I'm trying to buy a home and I can't qualify for the one I want, well, I can say, hey brother, um, or my sister or whoever, come buy this home with me and we'll live together in it. Well, as long as we're both living together in it, then we can, that's classified as a co-borrower. And you might say, well, it's not really co-signing. Well, in the way it is, because you're using both incomes, both minimum, hopefully debts, and then both credit scores to buy a home. And now they both have to live in it. The good news with this option is you could qualify for down payment assistance in this situation, as long as both of them are first time home buyers and both of them have the right credit, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a good situation for maybe, I've seen a lot of people who don't get married nowadays, nothing wrong with that at all. In this situation, they would both be co-borrowers. They're both buying the home together to qualify for that house. Don't even get any ideas of trying to do that or saying they're gonna live with you um, and actually have them not, because that's a federal offense and please don't mess around with that. FBI checks that out and it's scary. So if you do do this option though, and you're buying with somebody that you don't 100% trust, just keep in mind down the road when you sell the home, you're both on title. So if one of you guys wants to split or you guys want to sell the home or it's 50-50. So you guys have to arrange and make sure you're going into it with somebody you trust because you're both basically essentially buying the home. Now I'm saying two people, but it could be more than two. It could be three or four. I hope that does a good job explaining everything for you guys. If you have any questions, please give me a call. My contact information is below. You can find my website at JavierVidania.com where you can learn a little more about me and you can actually scroll down and start browsing some homes if you're in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And if you're not in Arizona and you're looking for a real Realtor, there's a link down below as well where you can fill in your info and I potentially may know a realtor in your area that's great if I don't know one give me about a week week and a half and I can find you a decent one so um, if you guys have any other questions please let me know and uh, I think that's about it for today once again thank you so much for uh, the Lizzie Hofer team at Guild Mortgage specifically Alejandra who took the time to understand all this their information can also be found below so there uh, Lizzie I think she makes videos once in a while so you can go down and subscribe to her um, and I think that's it guys thank you guys so much for your time hope you have a great day